Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm Jordan Rutter, Director of Public Relations at American Bird Conservancy. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel afterwards. We'll be putting the links referenced in the chat, but in case you miss them or can't copy them down fast enough, please know that everything can be found in a follow-up email that we'll send out to registrants or on our website. Please submit any questions you have during the presentation using the Q&A box. We'll try to answer as many of those as we can at the end of the presentations during the Q&A portion um, and as well as throughout the, the webinar. Automated captions are available for this webinar. You can turn them on by clicking on the up arrow next to the CC icon and showing subtitles is the button that you need to click on. You can also drag them wherever you want on the screen. Please note that the system we use is set to English and we're aware that this is a limitation and apologize for any errors that it might introduce to the captions during the webinar. Before we begin, I wanted to share some background. American Bird Conservancy, shortened to ABC, was founded in 1994 with the mission of protecting wild birds across the Americas. And we continue that work today following a conservation strategy outlined by the pyramid featured on the current slide. Our work strives to help keep common birds common and prevent the rarest species from going extinct. Bird conservation works. Species and groups of birds have rebounded in the past decades, but it doesn't happen without people like you who care about birds. So thank you again for joining our webinar. There are many species of hummingbirds and more than one for every day of the year. As a family, they fall into every level of the ABC pyramid, but today we'll focus on just some of the most threatened and in need of dire help. In a few moments, you'll learn from our panelists about the conservation efforts taking place to support this incredible group of birds that is only found in the Western Hemisphere. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our speakers. Amy Upgren has served as the Alliance for Zero Extinction Program Coordinator at American Bird Conservancy since 2016. She has worked in international conservation focused on Latin American and the Caribbean for over 12 years, providing training and technical support to international partner organizations. At ABC, she has managed bird conservation projects in Brazil, Peru, Nicaragua, Jamaica, Chile, and Mexico. Before joining ABC, uh, Amy worked with Conservation International and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Barbara Calvacante is a biologist and project coordinator at Save Brazil, where she is responsible for coordinating and implementing conservation activities at Serra de Urubu landscape through the Northeastern Atlantic Forest Project. And Jose Leon is a conservation and research projects coordinator at Pocotoco. He holds a master's degree in marine biology focused on conservation and tropical areas management. He has national and international experience in research and teaching. Jose reflects that as a biologist, his responsibility is to generate and share knowledge about the natural conservation in Ecuador. One of his most memorable moments in Hokotoko was the reintroduction project of his favorite bird, the red masked parakeet. Amy is going to start off now by sharing a little bit more about ABC's work and how it's helping hummingbirds. Thanks, Amy. Thank you so much, Jordan. Here, let me share my presentation with you all. Can you see that all right? Yep. Wonderful. Um, well, I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about the threat of hummingbirds in general the types of work that ABC is doing to conserve hummingbirds, and then give a few examples of the projects we have with partners in Latin America to prevent the extinction of hummingbirds. So altogether, there are 371 hummingbird species. And just as, as Jordan mentioned, ABC works throughout the Americas. Hummingbirds are found throughout the Americas, from Alaska down to Tierra del Fuego in Southern South America. 11% of all hummingbirds are considered to be globally threatened. And as you can see, particularly on map B that I'm showing here, threatened species richness is especially concentrated in Mexico, in the tropical Andes, and in parts of Brazil. For species that we have sufficient data for, uh, for the uh, population studies, we've found that over 60% of hummingbird populations are in decline. And this is especially true for tropical species with small geographic ranges. 
two hummingbird extinctions have been officially recognized. And these are both hummingbirds that used to be found in the Caribbean. So we know that hummingbirds can go extinct. So what is ABC doing and what are our partners doing to prevent future hummingbird extinctions? First, I want to mention the efforts of the Alliance for Zero Extinction, or AZE, of which ABC is one of over 120 global partners and global nonprofit organizations focusing on conservation that work to conserve the world's most threatened species and prevent future species extinctions. Uh, Mike Parr, ABC's president, is also the president of the Alliance for Zero Extinction. So we are very involved with AZE which has identified almost 1,500 species at 900 sites that hold the world's most threatened species. And these are extremely threatened species that only exist at one site. Altogether, there are eight hummingbirds that meet these stringent criteria, including the one that's on the front page of the Alliance for Zero Extinction website, which you can see right here, which is the Juan Fernandez fire crown from Chile. Another AZE hummingbird that I want to highlight is the Santa Marta saber wing, because just a few weeks ago, after over a decade of being undetected, it was refound by a local bird watcher in Colombia. So it's wonderful to be able to share this good news with you all. ABC works throughout Latin America and the Caribbean in partnership with national and local nonprofit organizations, including Fundacion Hokotoko and Save Brazil, and we'll be hearing from them in a couple minutes. But first, I want to tell you a bit about some other projects that ABC works on and the types of work, the types of projects that we do to conserve hummingbirds. This is a gorgetted puff leg in Colombia. It is also an Alliance for Zero Extinction hummingbird because of the severe threats um, to the species. We have worked with two different partners to create private reserves to protect this species, working over a decade ago with Proaves to uh, establish the first reserve to protect gorgetted puffleg and other species. And we're currently working with Fundacion Ecohabitats. Um, you can see a picture here of the type of habitat that, that will be protected to set up new private reserves. Another way that ABC works to protect hummingbirds is through community level protection. Uh, this, it, this beautiful hummingbird is a short crested coquette. It's found only in the Sierra de Atoyac in Guerrero, Mexico. And we're working with two different partners in Macab, a local nonprofit organization, and a professor from a local university on voluntary conservation area establishment focused around short crested coquette. This is what the Sierra de Atoyac looks like, a beautiful mountainous area. And this is a photo of uh, residents of a local community voting to establish a protected area for the coquette on their communal lands. Our partner in the white hat here is providing bird monitoring training to local community members. And we're also helping the local community with financial sustainability by helping to support the production and marketing of sustainably produced honey. If you look closely at this picture, you'll see that there is a picture of the coquette on the honey uh, because some of the proceeds of this honey then go back to the voluntary conservation areas to help with their management. And finally, I wanted to share this picture of a mural painted by these two young men of short crested coquette on a government building in one of the towns in the Sierra de Atoyac to raise awareness of this species and, and to raise pride that, that this beautiful hummingbird that is so threatened um, resides right there in, in their backyard. So we also work to protect hummingbirds by restoring and reforesting their habitats. Um, with our partner Ekowan, they have led a project to reforest uh, areas in the Vilcanota Reserve Network, a network of over eight, a uh, network of eight protected areas in Peru, and have planted over two million trees to date. The community is extremely involved in these reforestation efforts. This is a picture of women uh, carrying seedlings up the mountain. And you can see the numbers of people involved in the reforestation efforts and in planting these seedlings that were grown in the nurseries to help reestablish forests. The seedlings are monitored with the eventual goal 
of recreating the polylepis forests um, that that had been in this area and, and hoping to expand those forests to protect many different species, including the critically endangered royal synclodes, but also hummingbirds like the white tufted sunbeam. I also wanted to mention the role of tourism, again, with our partner Echoan in Peru. This is at the Wembo Reserve, um, where many people understandably go to see the marvelous spatula tail, this beautiful hummingbird that's also behind me in this, this photo. Um, Tourism generates enough revenue to cover the reserve management costs of the Wembo Reserve. So it's a great way that, that conservation is benefiting from bird tourism at the Wembo Reserve. Uh, I have a picture here of the lodge at Wembo of, uh, of a feeder area with benches and a rain cover so bird watchers can enjoy looking for marvelous spatula tail and other birds at the reserve. And you can learn more about the types of ecotourism projects that EDC's partners um, do on our conservation birding website, which you can see here. And if you look at the different countries and the different reserves, you'll see that hummingbirds are often the focal species that are, that are highlighted um, at the different reserves that, that we include on this site. So in conclusion, even small reserves can make a big difference. I mentioned that the, the hummingbirds under the largest threat are hummingbirds in the tropical areas that have small ranges. So even small reserves can protect an important part of those species habitats. Tourism is an important source of revenue. And hopefully now as, as things start to get back to normal, tourism will, will pick up again and, and provide the, that needed revenue. Community engagement is absolutely essential, as is capacity, build, capacity building and training locally for the long-term success of conservation projects. Thanks so much, Amy. That was wonderful. Uh, again, we will have more questions for you, Amy, at the end of the presentation. So if you could now go off camera, we'll hear from Barbara about a hummingbird garden in Brazil. So Barbara. If you come on camera and take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I think everyone sees me now. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, ABC, for the invitation to be here today. I would like to start asking you quickly, who have heard about Atlantic Forest? Please just say yes or no in the chat. I'm asking this question because a lot of people know about Amazon, but never have heard about Atlantic Forest. And I'm here today to present to you how we work to protect the birds that live here in the Atlantic Forest of Brazil. My name is Barbara. I work at SAV Brazil as coordinator of Northeastern Atlantic Forest Project. And I'm speaking from Pernambuco State, where we have a private nature reserve called Pedra Dantas. Uh, you see in the chat uh, a Google Maps link with the reserve location, just in case you want to check it out. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So, South Brazil is the Society for the Conservation of Birds in Brazil. We are a nonprofit organization that has been working in the last 18 years for conserving birds and environments connecting people to nature. You see this great and beautiful plain parakeet in this slide, which is native uh, and endemic to the Atlantic forest. Next slide, please. We are BirdLife International Partner in Brazil, member of IUCN, and we are also part of ABC's uh, Reserves Network. We develop projects all over Brazil, as you can see in this map, and most of them are in the Atlantic Forest, which is the home for about 70% of Brazilian population, but also is home for about half of Brazilian birds, many of them endemic to this forest. And just to give you a brief context, uh, Brazil is the first country in the Americas in number of globally threatened birds with, with uh, 166 uh, threatened species. We also remain in the second place globally, only behind Indonesia. 
Unfortunately, we have already lost this species, and that's why we need to make a great effort to, pre to prevent new extinctions to happen. Next slide, please. And this is on a, one of the main goals of our project. The region uh, here in the northeastern Atlantic forests of Brazil is, uh, this region uh, is the most degraded part of Atlantic forests. And despite this, uh, it, hosts, it hosts a great biodiversity that needs to be protected as this beautiful bird that you see in the screen, which is endemic to this portion of Atlantic forest here in Northeastern and globally threatened. His name is Seven Colored Tanager. Next slide, please. So um, our project aims to protect and restore Atlantic forest in, the, in this landscape you see uh, in the map, he, uh, which is known as Serra do Urubu Murici landscape uh, because of the presence of two IVAs called Serra do Urubu and Murici. You can see in this map, upper in the north uh, uh, part of the landscape is Serra do Urubu, where is uh, our reserve, Pedra Dantas Reserve, and uh, at south, is uh, Murici IBA, which is an important bird and biodiversity area. Uh, and this is uh, the landscape our, uh, that is uh, the scope, the geographical scope of our project here. And uh, next slide, please. And uh, in order to, and our project aims to guarantee the biodiversity protection, protection in this landscape, and also the, the provision of ecosystem uh, services. And for achieving this goal, we work in different front lines. One of them is the community outreach. And we use bird watching as a language to reach people, to reconnect people to the nature. So over the last years, we built with ABC support an infrastructure uh, to facilitate and stimulate bird watching at the reserve. Next slide, please. Thank you. <laughs> In 2000, um, 2019, we inaugurated a bird tower in the middle of visitor trail uh, in, the in the reserve. And so far, we recorded uh, 128 species from this tower. We have uh, a link of uh, the hotspot, the hotspot uh, of this tower in eBird for that ones who, who use eBird. So you can check the species that we recorded so far uh, from this tower. And this photo is, is great because it shows a group of local bird watchers, bird watchers uh, that we are training and training to be a local guides at our reserve. So like Anne said in her presentation, uh, we understand uh, tourism as a, a source, as an opportunity to, to generate uh, revenue, to create revenue, revenue income in the local context. Uh, next slide, please. Next, please. I don't know if... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So this is an upper view from the tower. It's a, a great view for, for, uh, from, from the tower, uh, uh, a great view of, uh, point of view uh, of Atlantic forest in our reserve. Next slide, please. I don't know, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, in, 2000, in 2017, we inaugurated the Hummingbird Garden in the administrative area of the reserve. Uh, this space uh, is, uh, was designed to, to give the visitors the opportunity to see the birds closer. We tried to, to create a place uh, where people want to stay, uh, want to contemplate the nature and also to facilitate the bird watching. Uh, uh, and also, and most important, to show people how they can attract birds to their homes without putting them into a cage. Because we have a cage culture here in our context. People used to keep birds as pets. 
So we want to inspire people to change this behavior, uh, actually think out of the cage. And ABC has been supporting uh, us in all this pro, uh, process. Uh, next slide, please. So here is another photo from uh, inside the, the, the garden. We have a, a designed garden around a, a, a shelter platform. So we have uh, signs with curiosities about hummingbirds that many people don't know, like hummingbirds only exist in Americas and things like that. And we also have feeders, uh, hummingbird feeders, fruit feeders, hummingbird feeders, and many plants, different species of plants with flowers who uh, which attract hummingbirds. Let's next stop, next slide, please. So let's uh, meet some species that visit the garden. So far, we have recorded twenty three hummingbird species in the garden, and uh, this uh, in the the screen is uh, one of the visitors we have here. It's uh, the black. Uh, the black-eared fairy. Next slide, please. And at the garden, it's possible to observe uh, a quarter of the total uh, total uh, number of species that exists that occur in Brazil. So in a seven seven hundred meters uh, square place space, we can see a great diversity of hummingbirds. Uh, like this uh, beautiful one, frilled coquette. Next slide, please. And also, we have a, our star of the garden, which is the long-tailed wood nymph. This species is globally threatened, is endemic to the Atlantic forest of this re region where we are. It only occurs in Pernambuco and Alagoas states state uh, where I am right now, I am in Pernambuco state. And despite being uh, threatened and rare, it's very common in the garden. So it's a great experience to the visitor, for the visitors to, to see this, uh, these birds, this beautiful hummingbird in the garden. Next slide, please. So um, I hope you liked that and uh, that I could spark uh, your curiosity about the birds of Atlantic Forest. Thank you all for being here today. Thanks, ABC, for the invitation and all the all support along all these years. And if you have any question, please just write in the chat or send, it, send us an, an email. And I hope to receive you here at, at Pedra Danta someday soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Oh, I know we all wish we could go and see all of those wonderful birds. Um, next up is Jose, who is going to talk about a very special hummingbird. Hi, everyone. I don't know if you can see me. Not yet. Your video is off and Barbara is yeah, no. on. It says, okay, I think. Okay. There you go. Wonderful. Perfect. Take it away. Okay. Thank you, Jordan, and thanks, ABC, for, for the invitation. Yeah, my name is Jose Leon. I'm the Conservation and Research Project Coordinators at Fundación Jocotoco, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit of about the really special project that we have, which is called Saving the Brutal Hellstar from Extinction. Next slide, please. Uh, so before I start talking about this uh, amazing hummingbird, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Fundación de Conservación Jocotoco. Uh, Fundación Jocotoco is an Ecuadorian NGO. It was created in 19, uh, 1998, and it has the mission of protecting some of the most threatened species and habitats of Ecuador. And we accomplished this uh, by creating this private reserve that are managed um, as natural reserves are protected areas. And we also do some restoration of the greater land, and also we work with uh, local communities in different conservation projects. 
After more than two decades of conservation work, we have a network of 16 reserves in Ecuador. We protect more than 29,000 hectares, and we contribute to the protection of more than 82,000 hectares around our reserves uh, by the creation of ecological corridors and also buffer zones. Uh, here in Jocotoco, we uh, are home to more than a thousand species of birds, more than 200 species of amphibians and reptiles, and different large mammals like the spectacle bird, the jaguar, the mountain tapir. So we started as a NGO just focused on conserving birds, but we have moved around and we work with uh, most of the other taxas in, in Ecuador. Next slide, please. So um, now let's talk about this really interesting hummingbird. This is called the blue throated hillstar, or Rochilus cyanolaemus. It was discovered in 2017 by one of our team members, Francisco Sornosa, and it was described as a new species in 2018. Uh, we believe that there are between 80 to 110 mature individuals uh, of this uh, hummingbird in Ecuador, and we can find it in the Cordillera Chila Teoloma, which is uh, located in the south, in the limits between El Oro and Loja province, and is usually in, in habitats really, really high like it's about 3,300 meters where we can find it. Uh, he, he actually likes uh, rocky areas and grassland paramos. And the paramos here in Ecuador are, uh, the, the, they face several threats, including like the burning of the paramos. Uh, far is a, a really severe threat here. Uh, people are accustomed to, to burn the, the paramos so they can expand uh, like the ranching and the agriculture. So that's a, a severe threat for the hummingbird. And due to these threats and the uh, low um, population, it is uh, categorized as critical in danger. Next slide, please. Next, yeah, there you go. Um, sorry, uh, I saw just a question there. Uh, a paramo is, a, is the, the grassland as we know it here in, in South America. Uh, so what have we done with this bird to, to save it from extinction? The, there are four uh, conservation actions that we are uh, doing right now. The first one is the creation of the Cerro de Arcos Reserve. Then we have done some research on the species, also some habitat enrichment, enrichment and community outreach. I'm gonna talk a little bit about all of this uh, on the next slide. So next slide. So uh, basically, uh, we created a reserve just to protect the, the remaining population of the Lutro de Hillstar. The reserve is called Cerro de Arcos. Uh, it has its name after the formation of natural arches that are a result of the decomposition and evolution over a million of years. Uh, this reserve was created in 2020, and now the area of the reserve is around 410 hectares, more than a thousand acres. It's mainly Paramo, and it has the altitudinal range of the, of the hummingbird. But basically in this reserve, we use the blue throated hillstar as an umbrella species to protect other species that, that live there, like the bear sandpiper that you're seeing in, the, in one of the pictures, paramo wolf, and a really important uh, flower species is the chukirawa. The chukirawa is known as flower of the Andes and is endemic to, to Ecuador and is also in danger. And it's a key food source for the blue throated hillstar. So, uh, when we created the reserve, it was just these little patches of Chukirawa that were the ones who actually allowed the, the blue throated hills to survive. And now we have a whole reforestation campaign based on, on these species. Next slide. So when it comes to research, the first thing that we wanted to know is we wanted to know more about the distribution and population status of the, of the blue throated hills. So what we did is we had a cooperation with a, a local university called Universidad de la Suay, and we did some um, exploratory field trips in the area to have a better understanding of the distribution of population studies. And the result of these explorations were using the red list assessment done by BirdLife International and provided the, the population data needed to categorize the species as critical and endangered. So there was uh, some really uh, good information they used to, to say that this is a critical and endangered species. And you can see a map here. This is the proposed conservation corridor that we want to accomplish someday, uh, connecting the, the core populations of the blue throated hillstar in Cerro de Arcos and Guanasan. Cerro de Arcos is the small uh, red, uh, uh, more or less a polygon that you're seeing there, and Guanasan is on the north. 
So we want to connect those two populations and we want to protect the whole distribution range of the, of the species. Um, the estimated area of occupancy that we want for this uh, conservation corridor is more than 400 kilometers square, and we're working towards that. Next slide. Um, so during these exploratory field trips, we also found three nests of the blue throated hillster. Uh, this finding led to the first publication describing the, the breeding uh, biology of the species. And it's quite interesting to know how they actually nest. Um, they like to nest in, in rocks, in, in caves up to five meters high, and it's really difficult to get there. So basically what we did is we hired a professional rock climber to install a system for us to, to be able to climb up there and, and monitor the nest. So I end up uh, learning how to do rock climbing just to be able to, to monitor these species. And also um, we install camera traps so we can record the whole um, breeding um, period of the, of the species. Uh, we also investigated the diet preference of the species. At the beginning, we just thought that it was just Chukirawa, the, the flower that we're feeding on. But we ended up finding that there are seven other species that the, the, the blue throat the hillstar uses as, as food. So we will use some of these species in, in future reforestation campaigns. Next slide. So when it comes to habitat enrichment, um, this was one of our priorities because we wanted to make sure that the hominid has enough uh, food to survive the whole year. So, uh, so far we have reforested 3.4 hectares in the Serra de Arco Reserve with more than 2,000 Chukirawa plants. Uh, we have also reforested areas of Southern Reserve with all of the local community. Uh, we end up building a, a nursery in the reserve, so we have a, a continuous supply of Chukirawas. And we are studying other local plants to know more about, the, the, about their phrenology so we can include them in the reforestation campaign. And by doing so, we want to secure a, a food source for the blue throated hillstead during the whole year. Next slide. Uh, finally, uh, we here in Hokotoko believe that if we want a, a conservation project to be successful, we have to work with the community. We have done so in very projects and this was no exception. We have established a very good relationship with the Guambusari community. That's the, that's, those are our neighbors over there. They have helped us uh, in the reforestation campaigns. We end up planting a thousand chukirawas in the communal land, uh, but we have to fence all the area because there was a lot of cattle getting in and, and eating the, the chukirawas. So, so we have to fence all the area. Uh, we have also organized several environmental education campaigns with the school uh, with kids from local schools. Uh, we end up creating uh, this booklet called El Pequeño Quinten, which is a booklet that tells kids the importance of saving the, the blue throat of the hillstar and also raise awareness about, uh, about conservation and the local species they have there. Uh, finally, we created a campaign with the Ministry of Environment to declare the blue throat of the hillstar as an emblem bearer of the Wambusari community. Next slide. So uh, this is a little bit of what we have done so far with the Blue Trade Hillster, but there's still a lot more things to do. Uh, for the next phase of our project, we aim to scale up our conservation efforts to prevent the species extinction and increase its population. Our next project will focus on habitat protection, expanding habitat restoration efforts, improving reproductive success with artificial nets, and continue with our successful environmental education program. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but I just want to thank you for, for your attention and any questions are more than welcome. Thank you so much, Jose. That was wonderful. Um, so I'm going to invite the rest of our panelists back onto screen because now is the Q&A portion and we've had a great engaged audience. So we have tons of questions to get through. Um, thank you to our audience for your patience as we get through them all. Um, first up, though, I'm going to start with Amy. And one of the questions we have is specifically about U.S. hummingbirds, birds that are found in the United States, and what threats do they face? Are there any species that are critically endangered and facing extinction? Um, if you could speak a little bit more to those species to, to kick things off, that'd be great. Yeah, of course. Well, fortunately, there are no critically endangered hummingbirds uh, in the U.S., but yes, they do face uh, lots of different threats here in the U.S. as well. And some of those are threats that that all birds or many birds face that ABC has been working on, um, such as pesticides, uh, collisions with buildings. So hummingbirds definitely um, face threats from 
from those types of problems. And it's something that ABC has been working on for years and will continue to work on. Thanks, Amy. Um, another question we have is about the reserve specifically. So maybe Jose and Barbara, you can you can start this off. But lots of folks are focused on the countries that you're representing today and thinking about things like illegal logging, um, different threats. Um, birds move. How do you keep them in a reserve and make sure they have enough space? So maybe Jose, you want to speak to the threats that are facing uh, reserves and then the birds themselves. Yeah, like all of our 16 reserves are protecting against any illegal extractive activities, including logging. Uh, when it comes to Cerro de Arcos Reserve, that the ones I was like, talking about, uh, is the only reserve of Nacio Cocotoco that is completely fenced. It's not that big, uh, but it's fenced to prevent illegal deforestation first, also fires, and especially the, the cattle getting in and destroying the recently reforested plants like the Chukirawa. So. We face a lot of threats, but when it's when we have like this amazing team of power guards and people on the on the field all the time, we can prevent them for, for happening. Thanks, Jose. Barbara, do you have anything to add for your reserve? Yes. Um you 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 said that uh, that <clears throat> sorry, birds move, how to keep them protected. That yeah, that's a, a challenge, and that's why we started to work with restoration. We not only protect the uh, patches of forest that remains, but we also planting forests. So increasing the habitat in this landscape, which, which is very much degraded. So we, we are acting in these two front lines and we just expanded our reserve with the support of ABC. We added 73 hect hectares in, at Pedra Dantas Reserve. So we are a, uh, strengthening the protection, increasing the protection, and also restoring uh, forest. Thank you. Now, go, just uh, one last thing to follow up with you, Jose. So fire is a natural occurring phenomenon, right? And the habitat does need fire. So how do you manage that threat, but also natural cycle that is needed? Yeah, it is true that fire is a natural occurring phenomena, but when it comes to the paramo, especially, people are used to to create fires so they can actually start like planting any other like local products. So that's a, a common occurrence there. So what we we cannot actually tell them not to do that, but we actually have designed specific fire protocols in each of the reserves that um, are especially designed to face any of these threats. And we not only work with our power guards, but with people from the communal, the, the local zones. So we, we they all know what to do when the fire gets out of control. So that's one way when we can actually uh, be one step ahead of, of fires. Yeah. So another common uh, theme of questions that came in um, both during registration and during the, the presentations is about climate change. So Jose, do you wanna speak to how climate change is affecting the hummingbirds in your area, and then we'll go to Amy and Barbara too. Sure. Uh, so for the blue throated hill storm, it is a highland hummingbird. It means that lives about 3,300 meters. So there's has been evidence of other bird species shifting their distribution to higher areas due to climate change. But for this species, the blue throated hill storm, there are no other areas that he can further migrate up. So that's a problem. That's why we have to act now to protect the remainder of suitable habitats of this species and secure its survival on the on the long term. Thanks, Jose. Barbara, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, actually, in our region, we are facing the change of, of rainy season, and this is affecting, of course, uh, some uh, site nature's uh, cycles. Uh, and that's why we, we are running out of the time to restore forest, forest to, um, to make this landscape more bird friendly in the long term. Amy, do you have anything to add? 
I would just add um, about the short crested coquette that I mentioned in Guerrero, Mexico. It, it lives in the cloud forest, and it's only been in the past 10 or so years that fires have been a real problem in the area, um, to the point that one of the main needs that our partner expressed to me was the need for firefighting equipment and training. Um, and, and, and so that could be a potential, potentially, uh, partly at least caused by climate change. Um, so an additional threat for a species that was already uh, critically endangered. So in a slightly happier note, let's talk about actual hummingbird feeding. Another huge topic that folks have asked questions about is how to actually support hummingbirds in regards to feeding and plants. So Barbara, you help with an actual hummingbird garden. Do you have any universal tips or tricks or things that um, folks should really take away from? Oh, actually, we, we chose uh, uh, we chose uh, plants uh, that we know that attract hummingbirds. So a lot of uh, a great variety of uh, flower plants to, to provide food uh, for the hummingbirds and uh, a lot of bromeliads as well because we, are, we have a lot of uh, uh, great diverse of bromeliads here. So we are constant, uh, constantly um, adding new species in the garden and maintaining and uh, um and also but but it's not so so complex it's very easy to to attract the birds we, we just need uh some uh uh some uh, pl plants to to them to perch uh and to feed and we also use uh the the feeders to to facilitate the 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 observation uh for the by the visitors and that's it just find what plants observe the nature observe observe the the the, the surrounding what, what plants are flowering what plants are visiting visited by hummingbirds and just put them close to your to your home <laughs> That's a great tip. But it is true that you have a lot of red plants and red feeders, correct? So in terms of a universal thing to think of is, it seems silly, but red is a great starting point, right? Red flowers, red feeders. Yeah, yeah, actually, yes. Um, we have a lot of red, red flowers, red, uh, pink, and the feeders, uh, the feeders are all red. And uh, uh, it's been, it's, uh, we believe that it, it attracts more uh, the, the, the hummingbirds. Yep, and just never use dyes. That's a really important tip. Hummingbirds don't need, don't need that extra red coloring of any kind. Just focus on the red feeder itself or red flowers. And of course, don't also, don't use pesticides. Um, make sure to use those native plants that are in your area and those will be the best attractants for hummingbirds in your yard or garden. Um, you don't need to get extra exotic ones. Unfortunately, all of those incredible hummingbird species that Barbara has in her area won't come to my area in the Washington DC area just because I have those exotic plants. <laughs> so, um, Awesome. So moving on, I wanted to also highlight a question that came in um, about culture and art. And uh, especially given that Amy, you shared about the mural, um, and then with Barbara and Jose, um, with your local communities, do any of you want to comment on the uh, role that hummingbirds play outside of conservation and really the inspiration that they offer people as well? So Amy, do you want to comment on anything else? I, I think they, th th I think most people like hummingbirds, right? I mean, even people who aren't birders can appreciate a hummingbird and, and the beautiful colors um, and the the strong personalities that they, they seem to have. Um, so I think using hummingbirds as sort of a, a keystone species for a, a reserve or for an area to get people excited about conserving it can be a successful approach. Barbara or Jose, do you have anything to add? Well, I think I'm with Amy. We we are we, here. We are trying to to make people to know hummingbirds. 
because sometimes they know one species, they, they know hummingbird, but they don't know there are 23 species here and the variety of colors of forms. And we, we are trying um, uh, always to, to, to show. And that's why we released this bird guide uh, uh, in 2019 with photos of the species uh, that occur in our reserve. And all the, bird, the hummingbird species that we have here are, are here in this book. And this is a material we, we distribute to the local community in our environmental education activities so that we can increase then their knowledge about, about hummingbirds. So that's, that's it. And we are trying actually to stimulate the local artisans, the local artists to produce, to produce, sorry, to produce, um, uh, 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 may, uh, uh, I forgot the word, I think uh, handcraft, something like that with birds, with the hummingbirds, with the birds of, of our reserve. And that's it, we, have tried. we are keeping uh, th thinking about work, uh, uh, things and uh, uh, possibilities to, to increase the knowledge of, of the people about hummingbirds and inspire them. Do any of you have a favorite hummingbird fact or anything else that you want to share about hummingbirds specifically, just in talking about all of the inspiration and how magical they are? Uh, I don't know if you have anything else. That's my own question. Um, I'll share one of my favorite facts is that a ruby-throated hummingbird, which is a species found in the eastern United States, um, can cross the Gulf of Mexico, which is about 500 miles, in about 24 hours. So that is just mind-boggling to think that this tiny little hummingbird can do that huge physical feat twice a year for migration. And I'm sure a lot of us spend a lot more time at our laptops watching webinars <laughs> than that tiny little hummingbird. So I think the fact that they're so small, <laughs> um, the, the a hummingbird egg is about the size of a Tic Tac and that just blows my mind. Um, I have a, a nice one. Um, the Chimborazo hillstar, uh, which is a hummingbird that lives in this volcanic area, uh, he actually likes snow. I have a video of him kind of, kind of like trying to, to catch the, the snow of the of the volcano. So that's that's really cool. I I like I like about the the flight, uh, how the uh, hummingbirds can uh, fly backwards. And this is very unique. I think the fantastic and how they, they are so fast and so uh, energetic. Uh, I really like this. There's so much variety in hummingbirds too. And I just want to really highlight that again for our audience. You know, we've talked on um, different, you know, dreaming countries, but hummingbirds, again, are the only only found in the Western Hemisphere. Um, there's more than one species for every day of the year. Um, there's about 370 species. The variety is amazing. You have everything from the bee hummingbird, which is um, less than two inches long, to the giant hummingbird, which is over nine inches long. Hummingbirds migrate. There's um, ones that have torpor, where they basically like hibernate overnight. So it's they're fantastic and so much to share. Um, okay, I'm just double checking some of the other questions that we wanna get through. Um, so one of the questions that's coming in is talking about um, really high level protection and conservation efforts for hummingbirds. Um, how are governments helping hummingbirds? Are there advocacy efforts ha happening, um, especially given current political situations and all of the countries represented here, um, as well as others? I don't know if any of you want to speak to, um, again, what are some high level conservation efforts and things that need support? Um, I don't know <laughs> if, any, if anyone wants to jump in. Um, Amy, I know you could talk about ABC's action alerts. Um, I don't know if Barbara or Jose has anything to add. Well, 
Well, I, I can add that um, there's a, a global effort right now to pr protect 30% of the world by 2030. Um, it's definitely a very ambitious goal um, and not hummingbird specific, but it would be a goal that could help hummingbirds because ideally that 30% will be uh, some of the most biodiverse places on earth, including some of the areas where ABC works and where Save Brazil and Fundacion Hokotoko work to conserve um, the most threatened species in the Americas. Thanks, Amy. One other quick question to get in before we run out of time. Um, this is switching gears a lot, but is a lot of folks have commented on how territorial hummingbirds are. And maybe Barbara, given the garden, you can speak to this first. Um, but a lot of folks want to separate their hummingbirds uh, because of competition. Do you need to? Um, <laughs> can they get along? Do you want to speak to the, to the, again, kind of feeding aspect of multiple hummingbirds at once? Yeah, that's interesting because we have some we have two or three species in our garden that are very territorialist and uh, they fight a lot with the other the others, especially the, the small ones. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, the strategy we, we found out was to actually, we have a lot of feeders, we have a lot of resource in our garden. So uh, I think uh, in our case, uh, as much as feeders we put, we kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain, we, we, we uh, 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 stopped a little bit this competition, but, 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 it, but it happens, of course it happens. Sometimes uh, the, the black Jacobin, I don't know the name of the gray one, uh, just the scientific names. We have three species that are very, very competitors, but uh, there, there are space for the others as well. So. We kind of, we kind of uh, uh, can see the others as well in the in the feeders in the garden, but there are, there are fights. <laughs> yes. Anything else you want to add, Amy or Jose? I always feel like they're more of like angsty siblings than actual um competitors especially because usually if you have enough native plants and feeders and things like that there's enough food around for everyone <laughs> so um okay any any last questions coming in i'm just double checking okay um so unfortunately we are running out of time and we're going to do our last question now um and we'll go in order of the presenters so I want to know what is one thing that you hope everyone takes away from this webinar and shares with a friend. So Amy, if you want to start. Yeah, of course. Um, I think one thing is that, you know, together with our partners, ABC is working to conserve threatened hummingbirds um, and, and successfully through reserve creation, community engagement and reforestation. So we we have some some good successes under our belt, but we really still have a lot of work to do. And Barbara? Yes, we have still a lot of work to do and we need all support possible to do that. And I think I would like to, uh, that people know now know that they, that exist another forest, another, another rainforest in Brazil, uh, which is Atlantic forest, and that it it holds uh, it hosts a lot of hummingbird, hummingbirds and a lot of birds endemic and threatened that needs our attention and our protection. That's it. Thank you. And Jose. Yeah, I think like thanks to this uh, seminar, we can now see that hummingbirds all along the Americas are facing several threats, and some species have already gone extinct. So. We need to act now if we want to save the remaining hummingbirds from extinction, especially when it comes to the blue throated hillster being a new species to science recently discovered in 2017, already categorized as critical in danger in its urgent conservation actions to guarantee its survival. And here in Hokotoku, we're doing our best to, to save the species from extinction. 
Thank you so much to all of our panelists for your wonderful presentations and your great responses. Unfortunately, we are closing out our webinar now, but before we go, um, we do have one special request. Hummingbirds and other endangered birds can't fight extinction on their own, but you, our audience and supporters can help be the difference between extinction and survival for many birds across the Americas. And that's why American Bird Conservancy has launched our Preventing Bird Extinctions Fund. All gifts to the fund will go towards programs that help save endangered and threatened species at the top of ABC's bird conservation framework or conservation pyramid, like some of the birds that you've learned about today. So please visit the link in the chat to donate directly to help save hummingbirds and other endangered birds. Thank you so much again for joining us. We couldn't do our work and help birds without your support. I hope you see some hummingbirds soon. Thanks so much. <laughs>